thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to share today results from a number of studies my team has done looking at the clinical risk factors and adverse outcomes among women with COVID-19 in the pregnancy and postpartum periods. So my disclosures are that the current work was supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I have other research support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as WHO, NIH, and the New York Academy of Sciences. I also want to acknowledge that the work I'll show you involves a lot of data from a lot of partners, and this was guided by a steering committee that included uh, folks from ACOG, FIGO, NIH, WHO, as well as many country partners you see listed here. So the goals for learning, learning objectives are to look at, understand some of the analytical methods that we've used, how we've synthesized global data on excess risks associated with COVID-19 and pregnancy, to be able to identify pregnancies that are higher risk of adverse outcomes, as well as give, give some examples of how the descriptive epidemiology here has influenced clinical and policy guidance, and we'll review as well the current guidelines for prevention and treatment of COVID-19 in pregnancy. So globally, other work has shown and our work confirms, which you'll see in a bit, that pregnant people are at risk for progression to severe disease with SARS-CoV-2 compared to non-pregnant peers. And pregnant people without COVID and those with COVID uh, comorbidities are thought to be at higher risk, although there's not really global consensus about what risk factors really signify such risk. So this is a problem for clinical care because some of these novel drugs and vaccines are only recommended for those at higher risk. So that's one of the things we'll, we'll talk about uh, here today. And I also want to look on the right, the, the language that WHO uses in, in their guidance, um, which, which specifically recommends vaccines, some of the vaccines, but others are noted uh, um, that they're recommended when the benefits outweigh the risks. So again, it's important to understand risks in pregnancy. And then the other thing I'll try to do here and our studies have tried to do is to address some of the heterogeneity in study design. So there are a lot of studies out there, um, but they're done in different ways and have different definitions. So globally, how we call it stillbirth, for example, uh, is, is different in the US, I'll say from 20 weeks gestation uh, globally, WHO says from 28 weeks. At any rate, that's one example of heterogeneity. And then you also, I'm sure, have seen in the literature that the studies are designed recruiting women at different gestational ages and early on a lot of different um, case definitions as well. So the study, the broad study that, that I've led with these colleagues I've mentioned was called a sequential prospective meta-analysis, which aimed to describe COVID-19 in pregnancy. This work started as just gathering case reports really early on in the, in the pandemic, um, but has, has come to focus on these three areas, which is to understand excess risks related to SARS-CoV-2 infection in pregnancy compared to non-pregnant women with covid compared to pregnant, other pregnant people without COVID and excess risk among people with, with COVID. So everybody has COVID, but who is at greatest risk? So these are the three different categories or three different questions we sought to answer. And how we did it, here's a little bit about the methods. You can see the protocol published uh, in PLOS One, but the idea here is that a priori, we agreed uh, on the research questions. The global community came together and we said, what are our inclusion criteria? What are harmonized ways to define key outcomes? And here, what I'll show you is using individual patient data to try and better answer these questions. And this has been sequential or updated, uh, meaning that we have, we have um, added more data. We used to do it month by month. Uh, now we're on, on maybe one of our last updates happening now. All right, so what I'll show you today, uh, which also has been published now, is including data from 33 countries and territories, including about 22,000 cases of SARS-CoV-2 infection in pregnancy. And you see where the, the data comes from uh, here from January 2020 through December 2021. We have 
uh, newer Omicron data as well that I'll show you in uh, towards the end here. So to answer the first question is, if we compare pregnant women with COVID to non-pregnant women with COVID, what's you know, what's the situation there? Here you see early data from the Mexican National Surveillance Program, uh, which was quite robust. And on the left, you see the absolute risk of death comparing pregnant and non-pregnant women with COVID. Uh, the adjusted case fatality rate for pregnant women was 1.3% overall, uh, which is quite high given the general age of, of pregnant women. It rose to 2.1% and all the way up to 5.9% for pregnant women aged 35 to 39 and 40 to 45, respectively. On the right is the adjusted relative risk of pneumonia comparing pregnant and non-pregnant women with COVID. Pregnant women with COVID consistently had a higher risk of death and pneumonia as compared to similarly aged non-pregnant women with COVID. And while the absolute risks are highest among older, older pregnant women, uh, you also see the highest relative risk here among younger women and older women, right? So even young women, we typically wouldn't see this in the general population, uh, we see, see high risk among people with COVID. The other way to look at this question of risk is to understand the risk of, of um, COVID in pregnancy comparing pregnant people with and without COVID. And so here are the results. This study was uh, published in BMJ Global Health last year. This is an individual patient data meta-analysis, including both unpublished and published data from a dozen studies, including more than 13,000 pregnant women at various points in pregnancy. And so this was intended to provide really robust and high quality estimates of the impacts of SARS-CoV-2 infection in pregnancy uh, as compared to uninfected pregnancies. So here what you see is that COVID-19 during pregnancy increases the risk of maternal mortality, uh, maternal mortality here, as well as ICU admission, receiving mechanical ventilation, receiving any type of critical care, or being diagnosed with pneumonia. And infants born to pregnant women with COVID were more likely to be admitted to the NICU, uh, which is an important and, and pretty consistent finding. And they were more likely to be born preterm and low birth weight. Now, in contrast to other studies, we actually didn't find any link in in. Uh, between SARS-CoV-2 infection and pregnancy and an increased risk of stillbirth, which you see right here. Um, and so that's an important distinction. There may be some, some methodological reasons for that. Um, but I think this is, is important because you know, it compares infection in pregnancy to uninfected pregnancies and really is, is some of the robust, most robust evidence out here showing really the increased risk that pregnant women with, with COVID face. All right. So the other part of this study was to look at who among everyone who has COVID, so all pregnant women with COVID, who is at the greatest risk for adverse outcomes. So this portion of our study, we look at excess risk among pregnant people with COVID. We compare people with and without the risk factors. We look at 26 different outcomes and 10 different risk factors you see there in the green box, including comorbidities, kind of nutritional status, as well as the social demographic characteristics. Who's in this study? You can see that you know, a lot of these studies did include people in their third trimester here, but our data includes people who were had an infection at any time in pregnancy, so even in the first and second trimester. And here, what you're looking at, each of these little dots is a meta-analysis. You don't have to uh, read all of the different dots here, uh, but here you see all the different outcomes from ICU admission, critical care, to uh, maternal morbidities, birth outcomes, and, and infant outcomes. And you're looking at all these meta-analyses for comparing women with diabetes and without, those with hypertension without, those with cardiovascular disease without. And 
to summarize very briefly, all of these are highlighted in this kind of pink red color because it's very clear that among pregnant women with COVID-19, those with comorbidities are at increased risk, which is consistent with the general population. We also had a small number of studies that included pregnant women with HIV. Uh, and in this case, we see Again, perhaps not surprisingly, that HIV co-infection does confer additional COVID-related, pregnancy-related health outcome risk. So for example, participants with COVID-19 and HIV were 1.7 times more likely to be admitted to the ICU or a 74% increased risk. I think the other important question we looked at was among pre-pregnancy or early pregnancy weight. So of course, everyone I'm sure is familiar with the data from the general population showing that people with obesity, you know, that this was an important risk factor in general with COVID-19. And again, we see here on the right, again, you see here are forest plots looking at all of these different adverse outcomes. And we see in general that pre-pregnancy obesity was a risk factor for severe COVID-19 outcomes, including ICU admission with an 81% increased risk, ventilation requiring critical care and having pneumonia. But I think important from our study, which includes data, global data, where we also had quite a few pregnant women who were underweight or had a BMI less than 18.5 before pregnancy, that they were also at a higher risk for being admitted to the ICU, being on a ventilator, and experiencing pregnancy-related death. And so I think this is, is one of the first studies to have enough power to show that both ends of the spectrum are important risk factors and something, something to keep an eye on. So you can see the excess risk among people with pregnant people with COVID anemia at the time of COVID diagnosis was also linked to COVID severity and stillbirth among pregnant women with COVID. And so I think another, again, uh, important risk factor to consider women with undernutrition, uh, depending on, on, on how many of those people you, you might see in practice, I think it's important to know. We also have been asked the question of whether this excess risk still exists during the Omicron variant era. And so a lot of the data from COVID and pregnancy came from early in the pandemic, and that's a lot of what you just saw. So we do have at least some new data to be able to answer that. So here you can see we updated uh, updated our meta-analysis. In general, there are very few studies in the Omicron era overall looking at kind of whether there's excess risk in pregnancy. Um, of course, in a few studies have compared Delta to Omicron era for outcomes, including our group. And here you see there are several studies that generally show there's decreased severity among pregnant people with COVID in the Omicron compared to Delta period. We, when we updated our systematic review to identify Omicron era, we actually did not find any new studies to add, but we did have a few studies uh, participating that, that were able to contribute data in the Omicron era. So I'll show you this. This is preliminary and, and unpublished, but here what I can say is that there are three, three studies uh, in in our um, study group with about 1,500 participants that did have both COVID and non-COVID pregnancies recruited during the Omicron era. And there's also a paper by Jose Villar with the prospective cohort of pregnant women, again, including Omicron era data. And here what you're looking at is a meta-analysis pooling this data, which is shows kind of the same thing I was showing you before, which is that even in the Omicron era, we still have an increased risk. COVID-19 in pregnancy compared to those who don't have an infection increases the risk of preterm birth, uh, as well as it looks like uh, low birth weight, NICU admission, ICU admission, perhaps uh, increased risk of preeclampsia or eclampsia and cesarean delivery as well. And so all of this to say is that even 
in this in an era where outcomes seem to be a bit better, we still see increased risk with pregnancy. The other important thing about, or other important data we have in the Omicron era comes from uh, the inter-COVID study showing that vaccine effectiveness for all vaccines for severe complications of COVID-19, we see even in the Omicron era, era that a complete vaccine regimen has good vaccine efficacy, much better 76% vaccine efficacy with a booster dose. That comes from a global inter-COVID study, I think 18 countries there. And then there's also a US test negative study design, which again shows vaccine efficacy for hospitalization among pregnant people is still really good uh, in, in showing really kind of our best, best um, vaccine efficacy here, 86% for people with three doses. There are also now several studies looking at a booster dose in pregnancy, generally showing it's safe and effective. We see a third dose of the mRNA vaccine in Israel showing good protection. A, say, a study from, from Brazil uh, also showing good vaccine efficacy against severe illness. And these are people getting the third dose in pregnancy. There are several studies also showing from Australia, from Canada, showing a third dose in pregnancy is associated with reduce, reduced adverse outcomes like stillbirth and preterm birth. Uh, this, is, this is the study by Fell and colleagues in BMJ Medicine. And importantly, maternal immunization protects infants up to six months after after um, vaccination. Protection is lower in the Omicron period, but remains. So this is important. So you've just seen a lot of epidemiological data. I'm an epidemiologist. What does it mean? Why do we care? I think it's been important in informing policy. So you'll see, I just, this is the map of where vaccine uh, policies existed in March, 2021. You can see only one country had a vaccination policy for pregnant women. And where we are uh, this, this month uh, is that the vast majority of countries, you can see, recommend uh, vaccines in pregnancy. And to be clear, WHO not only recommends vaccines in pregnancy, but specifically recommends a, that all pregnant women receive a single dose during pregnancy. So this could be primary series or booster. It's recommended mid-second trimester, but anytime it can be given to avoid missing the opportunity to vaccinate. So I think given all of this data about the excess risk, this is a really important take-home message. The other piece to note here is that now you're looking at the WHO therapeutics and COVID-19 living guidelines that I've summarized here for you. And really the important piece here is you see all of the currently, currently recommended drugs for treating COVID in general. And you'll see that now none of these guidelines specifically exclude pregnant people except molnopavir. Um, this is the only one that has an exception in pregnancy. All the rest are, are recommended or permitted for use in pregnancy by these living guidelines. Uh, and so I think that's also important. Why do I think it's important? Anecdotally, my colleagues, we hear stories kind of, I will say generally about undertreatment for pregnant women in, um, with COVID. So in general, I think it happens often, uh, especially outside of a um, obstetrics practice uh, that people are afraid to give medications for treatment in pregnancy. And there is a forthcoming study by colleagues at Utrecht University in collaboration with the European Medicines Agency and our team that confirms this, that, that in fact, we, we do see that pregnant women may have been undertreated for COVID-19, especially, especially during the first trimester. And given this, I think it's important to keep that in mind and know the latest guidelines that do in fact permit the use of all of these treatments during pregnancy.
So to summarize, we found that SARS-CoV-2 infection increases the risk of pregnancy-related death, severe maternal morbidities, and adverse fetal and newborn outcomes. Specifically, pregnant people with comorbidities, including diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, compared to those without those comorbidities, were at increased risk for, for adverse pregnancy health outcomes and higher risk for severe COVID. We also found this a particularly high risk among people with COVID-19 and HIV, as well as pregnant people who were underweight before pregnancy. Those people had higher risk of ICU admission, ventilation, and pregnancy-related death. Pre-pregnancy obesity was an important risk factor as well, as well as anemia. Uh, and I think importantly that pregnant people with COVID-19 continue to have higher risks of adverse outcomes during the Omicron era, and this includes preterm birth, increased risk of cesarean delivery, et cetera. So, from our work, I think it's important to understand that pregnant people are at higher risk, um, that COVID-19 and pregnancy at any time is linked to excess risk for both mom and for baby. The vaccine dose, and a lot of this data is what fed into this recommendation that a vaccine dose in pregnancy is recommended by WHO, although coverage remains really quite low. Uh, and these new studies, uh, really highlight that if you're considering risks and benefits, you need to consider chronic disease, co-infections, poor nutritional status, younger and uh, older maternal age as part of that risk-benefit discussion. And importantly, these treatment options are available and have been shown you know, safe and effective in, in pregnancy and, and should be used. So with that, I will say thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your time.